This video is sponsored by HD Piano. Learn the best songs on piano at hdpiano.com. Today, I've asked some of my favorite YouTube piano players to have a go improvising a solo over the same backing track. Now, I actually got this idea from the wonderful Paul Davids, who is a fantastic YouTuber. You should check him out if you don't know him already. He's done a series where he asks different guitarists on YouTube to solo over the same backing track. So today we're doing the same thing, but with keyboard players, with piano players. And of course, I didn't want to do this without Paul's blessing. So I did reach out to him. And not only was he really up for the idea, but he agreed to let me use one of his existing backing tracks that he's written as the basis for our improvisation. So thank you so much, Paul, for providing the accompaniment. So now let's have a look at how each different piano player approached the challenge of improvising a solo over this chord progression. Let's start with Charles Cornell. So this course was actually a really interesting lesson in keeping things simple because originally I was like, oh, I'm gonna find all these cool ways to play really crazy stuff and do all these cool changes. And then the backing track like just didn't really support any of that working. I just sat down and tried all kinds of different approaches and really the only thing that sounded at all good was when I just kind of stood back and just let the music do its thing. So I put the track on loop and I just went through it a bunch of times until I felt like maybe one of those in there might work. And then inevitably you'll have an idea in one chorus that you wind up wanting to try to do again in another chorus. And then that's gonna screw that chorus up because you're trying to think through the thing you did before while you're also trying to make the new stuff up as you're going along. Not a good way to do it. So yeah, for this one, just leaving a bunch of space and letting the feel do the work felt like the right approach. Next, we've got Nare Soul. Hi, David. First of all, love your channel. Looking forward to the video. Honestly, I did not know how to approach this because it's a genre that I'm totally not used to soloing over. But what I really like about it is the pacing. And I decided to write a predetermined opening line, which is this. And I think I will focus on that fourth there and that sus sound it works well against that bass line and i just find it useful to have some sort of material to reference throughout the rest of the solo and so this will be sort of the dna of my solo Next, we have Jeff Schneider improvising at the piano. 
Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. First of all, big thanks to David for including me on this project and also thanks to Paul Davids for a really cool track. You know, this, this is a little bit of a slower tempo, so I'm going into it trying to focus on phrasing and developing my ideas. Those are my, my two north stars, if you will, just really focusing, focusing on how I'm playing, like the phrasing, and then making sure one idea relates to the next. Other than that, you know, there are a couple chord changes here that are outside of the key, so I'm trying to to nail those core changes, to make those changes without it sounding out of place or awkward. Um, but, you know, I think I, I've been messing around with the pentatonic scale, just the, the C major, A minor pentatonic scale quite a bit, just to kind of balance out the, the more non-diatonic chords within this progression. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks again for including me, David, and uh, looking forward to hearing what everybody else has to play as well. Improvising at the piano is really one of my favourite things to do. It's, you know, composing but in real time and it's different every time as well. Also, when you're in a live setting improvising, there's almost a level of risk and, you know, there's stakes there because it could go wrong. You, no one, including the audience or the player, knows exactly what's going to happen next. So that's why improvising is so exciting. So if you want to know more about my personal process when it comes to improvising or you want to learn yourself how to improvise a solo at the piano like the wonderful solos we've heard so far in this video then i've actually made a dedicated video about that over on hd piano in addition to that i've made an exclusive course with hd piano where on three of the episodes we actually look at how to improvise at the piano so if improvising at the piano is something that you're really interested in getting better at, then do check out those exclusive videos over on HD Piano using the links down below in the description. Our next improviser is Amy Note. I had this idea right from the beginning that I wanted to do like, uh, something like that. It almost starts like the Godfather theme, right? And, and then that's, all, that's the only thing I kind of pre-planned was just that very first opening contour and then I just kind of improvised from there uh, but when I got to that part with all of the um, F to G and like G sus um, to A minor like all of that part I I just had that idea for kind of a Floyd Kramer um, and I, I think I off placed it just a little bit in, in the beat which was a fun thing to happen in the moment. Um, I really dig the part where it goes to A major, and that was fun. I, I like the bouncy parts of the, uh, the descending A minor. And that's about all I've got for you. Thanks for uh, including me.
Our next piano solo comes from Sanga Nuna. The first thing what I did was play along with the backing track without looking at chord chart. That means I had no idea what the key is or tempo or style is. I had no idea. Whoa! <laughs> it was like that. Like、uh, meeting a new person at the very first time. It's fascinating. I always love love that feeling, and that's how I learned the structure of the song. When I compose or improv, I don't really think about、hmm, what kind of skills or modes could I use. I don't do that, but structure. Because music is all about storytelling. If I know where the intro, body, and outro is, I'm good to go. I already played this a few times, and I feel so great. And I love the chord progressions and even the tempo. Oh, the intro, the first two measures don't have bass. So I thought, hmm, it's like an option. I can start something big. Hey, look at me! I can start a song like this big. Or, huh, I'm kind of shy, but could I start a song something like that? So it's my choice, right? I already made the decision which way I would go. So I'm so ready. You ready? Let's go. Oh, by the way, I'm Senga Nuna. Our last improviser today is me. So let me talk you through how I approached this solo. So although I think it's healthy to have the odd moment of flashiness, I think ultimately you want to think about melody. It's composing, right? But in real time. So I'm thinking about what notes in each chord can I highlight as we move through different chords. Is there a different scale I can move to? The scale I gravitated towards for this particular chord progression is A minor because. We are in A minor here. That's the key. But of course, there's many notes here in some of these chords that don't fit into the normal A natural minor scale. So, what I do when I reach those notes, for example, in the F minor chord, is you know rather than playing A, I play A flat to match the note below. That's a fairly typical thing to do, right, when composing, when improvising. But something I might also do is think about what other notes could work with that particular chord in this moment that won't work throughout the song. Because it's almost like when we're on that chord, we've got a, a unique opportunity to go somewhere slightly different. So, for example, on the F minor, B flat works quite nicely over the F minor, but it doesn't work so well over A minor. So, for most of this chord progression, the note B flat isn't really available to us. But during the F minor. It is so. The way I see it is that's a, a opportunity to get another flavour in there that we may not be able to get for the rest of the solo. So look out for that in my solo. And beyond that, I try and have a sense of dynamic. You know, I don't want it to be bombardment of flashy scales. So I try and start kind of a bit more、um, subdued, and then develop and peak in excitement, and then pull it back again. So we have that sense of journey throughout the solo.
and that's my solo. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in having your own go at soloing over the same backing track, I've made it available down below on my second channel. You can head over there. And if you do record yourself improvising over it, make sure to tag me using at David Bennett Piano and I will be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you want to learn more about how to improvise at the piano, including my own personal sort of ethos on how to improvise, then do check out the exclusive videos available over on HD Piano. They are linked down below in the description. Thanks very much. And also, before I go, I must say a massive thank you to all of the other wonderful YouTubers involved in making this video. All of their channels are linked down below. Do go and subscribe to all of them. They all make fantastic musical content that will make you a better musician. Thanks again.